Hello fellow survivors and welcome back to Road to 500 Days. We are still here in Milton, which we recently came to and started conquering. I'm in this random house, the house on the hill as it were. And this is where I left it and we were looting Milton and that's what we're going to do more of today. But we're also going to fix the tower and we're going to go to the signal, um, uh, signal void bunker, which is actually in Hushtra Valley. And so we're going to do that. But it's still got a little while until the night hits though. So we're going to loot around Milton. And then we'll go and take care of the signal tower. Now we do have the scrap metal for that. We do need the fuses. Although I think I have some fuses in uh, the farm. But we're going to have a look at that later. We do need some food actually also. I do need to maybe go hunt. So we don't have that much food. So I might need to do some harvesting. Uh, how are we doing map wise? Yeah, okay, it's all good. All right, so let's do some looting and possibly some hunting. We got some cattails and stuff here. Seems to be a carcass up on a hill, probably a deer carcass. Uh, the moose, I can't remember if the moose is... Uh, in the basin or not. <clears throat> well, we got some cattails here. Should keep us going for a while. So we'll just grab those. Quite a few of them here in this little pond. I'll loot Milton and we'll repair the tower. We have already looted quite a lot of Milton. But there are some houses here that we've uh, haven't gone into. Milton is a, it's a neat place. It's, it's nice to be here again. Because uh, I haven't really been to this place much. I mostly play it in, in story mode. And then that's about it. I come through here and don't usually spend a lot of time here. A lot of things to loot though. It's very beginner friendly. Other than the wolves, um, which are in the center of town often, it's a it's a good place. Good for new players. Okay, uh, let's do this lane here first. Okay, we got two houses we can enter here. Check all this. Nothing in the back seat. Have a hair. Okay. Ah, <laughs> of course. Do I have one of these? I do. Okay, well, let's put that away then. I'm gonna mark this. Uh, uh, materials. I'm not going to take it with me, but... But this car... Has a battery. And of course it has a battery. Right? Of course it does. <laughs> I just dragged the battery all the way from Pleasant Valley to here. And of course there was a battery here anyway. Now I didn't know that that was a possibility because the likelihood of getting a car battery in Milton is very high. It's very likely. But I don't think it's guaranteed. But even if it is guaranteed, that's something I wasn't sure of and I wasn't going to take that risk. So I'd rather bring the battery uh, <clears throat> than going back and forth in case it wasn't guaranteed. I do need to get some uh, lantern oil. I think you can fish in the basin. I don't think you can fish up here. I don't really need the lantern in here because it's not that dark. But the main reason I'm using it is uh, because of you, the viewers. Hey, matches. Neato. Uh, because um, then you can see better what's happening. Uh, da -da -da. <clears throat> Wool socks. Give me wool socks. I'm still missing. 
My wool sucks, where are they? Check on the bed. No. Water. Okay. First aid kit. Just give me. I'll take those. Give me wool socks. <laughs> Okay. Might have to cook these uh, wolves. Let's see what we got in here. Tiny house on the inside, big house on. Sorry. Tiny house on the outside, big on the inside. Hey, we got salt and everything here. Yeah. Hey, another skillet. Wow. This stuff will come in handy. Salt, dog food, a lot of stuff in this house. This random little house. This is almost out. Hey, granola bar. We found a few things here. Is that a potato? It is. A ruined potato. Eh, we can cook it, you know. Okay. These ones I almost missed. Briefcase, wool socks. Damn it. Am I ever gonna find my wool socks? This is running out of gas. Need to find some lantern oil. Alright. Bit here. I don't think that's much use anymore. So there was another house over here. There's always one of these houses up. Just open this uh, car with the Canadian flag on it. There's always one of those around. It varies where it is. Okay. A spray can. And there's a house next to it too that we can loot as well. <clears throat> now I think we're near the end. Let's see what we got in here. Yeah, I'm not going to use the lantern now because it's out of fuel basically. Charcoal, we'll take that. We got potato and more salt. There's a lot of salt around. Getting more food though. If you spawn here in Milton, which you don't do an interloper, but if you spawn here on other difficulties, there's a lot of stuff to loot. There's quite a bit of stuff here, even on interlopers, and lower difficulties, there's even more. So, there's quite a few things to find here. But this is one of the regions where you can't spawn here on interloper. You can't spawn on interloper, you can't spawn in uh, Mountain Town, in Broken Railroad, and in Coastal Highway. As well as the Far Territory, as well as Bleak Inlet. You ca you can s and Mystery Lake. You can't spawn in Mystery Lake either. Hope nobody hmm. needs this anymore. You can spawn in Black Rock, but not in Bleak Inlet. I do wish actually there was an option to <coughs> turn on like the random or make meant the Far Territory, but because it's a DLC, I guess it makes sense that it's not like that. Okay. Wool socks. <laughs> I wonder if I can drop any of this gear. Uh, how much is in here? Let's take half a liter. Okay. Is that all the houses? I think there might be one more. Yeah, this one, the small one. Eh? Always check the back of the pickup trucks. Sometimes there's tools and stuff under the snow in there. Check the mail. A 
you're very lucky, usually those things are empty, the mailboxes are empty. Sometimes there's newspapers in there. If you're very lucky, eh, boots. I think I can use this. You will find uh, chocolate or granola bar in there. And on lower difficulties, you can also find bullets in there. A bit dark in here, but we'll make do. Could lit a fire, I suppose, outside. Hey, accelerant. Would have preferred lantern on a low. Use some fishing for that. This I will tea. Hmm, nice. Oh, I can't open it because the toast is in the way. I wonder if you break this down. Can I open it? I don't think so. It looks static, but my curiosity. Let's do this. No, I still can't open it. Worth trying it though. Man, all I can think about is food. If you're in a, if you're low on food like this, the one thing you can do to save calories is to um, stop before you loot something, and then you won't burn as much. I'll show you next time I can do something. Okay, so here. Okay, let's do the examples. All right. Look at uh, <clears throat> look at my food meter now. Right. If I'm moving, I drain two chevrons down, two arrows drained. And still it's one. Notice if I walk towards this drawer now, and I loot it right away. Notice what happens with the food meter. Okay, watch. You see how it's still two? Now I changed to one. That's because for some reason, when you interact with something to loot, it freezes the hunger meter. So you you are burning calories as if you are walking, even though you are actually standing still. To circumvent that, you walk towards it, stop, and then loot. See, now it's not doing it. So uh, that's interesting, isn't it? In principle, or like in general, you, you're not going to use it very much, and you'll see me very often not bother. I'll just like click and loot or whatever, you know, I'm not too bothered, but... If you are in a situation where you really need to uh, uh, just preserve calories, then uh, it can come in handy. Let's see here. Uh, I think that's all of the has one here also. Let's see. Did I harvest the meat from these wolves? Let's just have a look. Or was it just the hides that I took? I took, okay, I took to me, yeah. Then that case, let's continue. I walked past the house there. A single rose hip? Okay. You need to go cook some food. I, I should take advantage of this sun, to be honest. But, uh, I can wait. I don't, I don't mind if I have to use a match. Or rather than rush back to my food storage just for that. Nothing in here at all. Okay. <clears throat> I think we're approaching the end here. Uh, have I been in here? Actually, the post office. I don't think I have. I'm burning more calories also because I'm heavy. Let's see. I have not been in here. No. This is a small place anyway. Uh, ah. Shooting guide. Yeah, you can take it. Uh, I sometimes get asked if you can get to level 5. Uh, with uh, guns on interloper. And I don't think you can. <clears throat> it's possible. I did try it once. On my old main run, I had that uh, feat where you get more skills from reading books. And I did read all of them. I think I missed one book that I didn't read properly. Or I burned it or something. So I um, I think I got to f level four and a half or something like that. I think I've been into these two houses, but let's just double check. And Milton, actually, the spray can can come in handy because you lose track of which houses you've been in. <clears throat> yeah, I've been in here. If I've been in here, I assume I've been in the next one too, but we might as well just check. 
So at least when I did that, you couldn't you couldn't manage to get to level uh, five uh, with guns, even with defeat. Uh, how it might be possible, uh, one of the uh, old classical streamers, not because he's old, but he's an old school, uh, Kimiota, who many of you know, who's been playing since early access, and he's got something like twelve thousand hours in this game or something. Um, he recently did a run where he tried to get level five firearms and i don't know actually if he managed but his argument was that before um it was possible to get very close but now uh with the um oh, with the uh, uh far territory it should be easier because um uh, there should be books in the far territory too, so there might be more books and there might be possible. So I don't know. We will give it a try in this run, but in this run, um, uh, we don't have that feat. We're gonna head back to base with our stuff. I think, yeah, I think I haven't been into this house over here. I think that's the last one. And the sun's going away, of course, just when I was gonna go cooking. Ah, oh, this car I also missed. Let's actually just drop five scrap metal, like right here. Yeah, that's to repair the uh, antenna. Okay, nothing there. Okay. And then here. <clears throat> I remember when I first played Wintermute, this house was important. I'm not sure if it still is. I don't think so. But in the original version of episode one of Wintermute, you went into this house and you came into one of those houses that we weren't before that has like a curve around the hall. Um, and we've been to a few of them already this episode. And <clears throat> you had to open up some floorboards to find a distress pistol. You didn't have any weapons. Just like you do in the current episodes. But you could find a stress pistol to scare off wolves. That was kind of the point of it. So you had some defense against wolves was, was the idea. Hey look, flower. Sweet. Yeah, real line. And, um... Uh, oh. But then they did the Redux. Or Redux version. Where they changed episode 1 and 2. And upgraded them. And then I think they removed that. I don't think you can get that anymore. Okay. Fire log. Uh, this stuff will come in handy. I guess we can take it. The thing about fire logs is they're really heavy, and they are generally speaking not worth carrying around. The only real argument, really, for having them, is that um, they do add a lot of burn time to a fire. So there is that, I suppose. I need to get back to base. Get ready for the for the night. Wool socks, wool socks. You know, it's funny. I I'm getting close to having looted the entire world now. You know. No wool socks. And uh, I only found one pair of wool socks. All oh, right, I took my trousers off for some reason. Um, <laughs> but then the other day, I started a custom run called the Eternal Blizzard Challenge, which you may have seen. If not, you can check it out on my channel. Uh, I basically use a mod so that the blizzard never stops. It's always a blizzard. <clears throat> and uh, <laughs> what happened was I spawned in Pleasant Valley and I didn't leave Pleasant Valley. I was just staying in Pleasant Valley surviving. And I found three wool socks in one region. And here I found one pair in the entire game. They're running out of places to loot, you know. At least it has significant loot. I haven't looted everything in Hushra Valley. Uh, Blackrock. 
uh, some places, Nash Canyon, and of course the uh, Sona Contamination. So there are places I haven't been to properly, but still. How heavy am I? Ah, it's not worth taking the Troa for this. Uh, I'm thinking of maybe hunting a deer just to have some food. Uh, this wolf might do it for me though. Oh, come on. Bit of a delayed reaction there, but okay. Uh, let's see. I don't want a micro harvest. Let's just do. Should be fine because the wolf was fleeing. Now I might use the sled. <laughs> I also want this. But I need. I need to eat. <laughs> I need to eat first. We have this as well. Guts uh, can wait, I guess. Uh, I might use a knife for the guts. How long? 20 minutes, let's do it. And now we're approaching night. We can maybe even go sleep like one hour or something. Drop this. Thing. Put stuff in here. Uh, put this in there. And uh, that was heavy here, these ones. Good enough for now. Oh, actually, no. Uh, put that in there too. Okay, now we have some food. Uh, oh yeah, my water, damn. Uh, hey Wolfie. Okay, I guess I kill you. I wasn't going to, but... There we are. Maybe I'll harvest you later, not right now. We're on a schedule, you see. Let's get my, uh, my arrow. I think the wind is against me too. Uh, here it is. <clears throat> Let's go. We'll leave this though. And I'll cook this uh, next opportunity I have. Really want? I can eat it raw, but I don't think so. We got quite a bit of meat now. There's a great clip of of the stream around Alpha here. Oh, it's so good! Like he comes out of the farm, and he looks over here at the orchard, and he looks and he's like, "Let's check for wolves." You know, he's like, "Looks clear, okay," and he walks over, and it's basically a wolf, like basically here kind of thing right under this little little incline here and he's like doo -ba -doo -ba -doo, and it all comes out oh god <laughs> sometimes it's unlucky like that okay to so the sled is uh, really good I didn't think it would be a major game changer but it is is really really big okay <clears throat> so we have a lot of meat now we just need to cook all of it really we need to cook all of it wait what so we got wolf meat and ptarmigan meat drop all the stuff okay right so it's time to Go fix the 
10, I think, if I have enough few Do I have enough fuses? I think so. Not a lot of visibility here, but... Uh, let's see, we got maple curing here. We got another maple here. Let's put down the hides and the guts. And let's just see here. Do I have... Yeah, I got... Okay, nice. I got, got them. Wait, what? Wait a second. Let's put some stuff in there. We don't need this uh, book. We don't need Canada money. Uh, all of this stuff in. And I, yeah, I did take my dip trousers off for some reason. I'm not sure why I did that. There we are. I'm not going to put any food in there. Uh, or any of this stuff. But I put the spray cans in. And then I need three of these fuses. A single roll sip for some reason. And I'm gonna get a carry one piece of cloth. Okay, uh I do need to eat. I kinda need light to be honest. I think we'll just uh so we're gonna sleep for one hour, I think. Yeah, like one hour. Warm up. And then uh I could use the torch. I really don't want to, though. Let's use what's left of this for the moment. Because I want to drop some stuff here. You can always sort it out later <clears throat> when we have light. Let's just drop for now this stuff. That. Oh, also accelerant. And also here on the floor. We'll just drop all the stuff that we don't need. We'll sort it out later. Uh, we don't need it right now, so. Uh, da -da. We might need this dog food. Drop the flour as well. We can carry this coffee, it's fine. Uh, I guess that's it for now, I think. Yeah, that ran out. Great. Let's put our trousers on. Okay, <clears throat> so I can barely see anything, but here you can see the light here. This is the window, and here's the outside. Okay, so let's uh, let's eat this dog food. And we'll also each eat the... Uh, oh, I got these potatoes too. Uh, let's carry them. I'm also going to eat this peach pie, I think. Uh, not yet, actually. We'll see. And uh, we're not heavy anymore, which is good. I'm carrying a bit more than I need to, but it's okay. <clears throat> Alright, let's build this reactor. Okay, we don't smell except for our little pies. Uh, which I think actually I'm going to leave behind here. Hopefully I'll see them. I always do like this, drop a, drop a, a stick next to it. I'm like, yeah, look, pies, you know. Okay. <clears throat> no more lantern fuel. And now I think I've looted everything. Uh, I might use my flare or light a torch. Flares are great, but they're so noisy. But I think now we looted all of Milton, as in the town itself. Uh, there are still things to loot. We have to loot the uh, church and the trailer. There's still a lot to do here, though. You know, other than that, we need to get to the plane crash. We need to kill the bear. We need to kill uh, the moose. Or I think. Can I get over there, actually? Yeah. I think the moose is in the basin. Um, there's a few, quite a few things to do here. Yeah, we're going to be here for a little while. I think Hush River Valley, we're going to Hush River Valley now because the uh, bunker is there. Uh, but I don't think we're going to stay in Hush River Valley, I don't think. We'll come... Oh, we have an aurora actually. There's an aurora happening. You can hear it. Can you hear it? So, uh, when you repair the transmitter tower, it triggers an aurora. 
It's not when you turn the tower on, actually. It's just when you repair the tower, then an, an aurora is triggered. <clears throat> However, today it seems like we got an aurora anyway. Isn't that nice? We gotta have our ball ready because uh, the aurora walls are tricky. I have killed a lot of wolves already, so we should be relatively safe. Safe. There we are, the aurora has come out. So let's go and repair this tower. There you go. Oh, I haven't lost this car. Missed it. Don't see anything there. The effects of the aurora does not happen right away. So if you look around... Anyway. You'll notice that not all the effects are up. Right now this, the lights are on. I'm not sure if the aurora wolves are out. Maybe they're out by now. Usually when an aurora hits, it takes a little while before the effects of the aurora are actually felt. So usually the lights and the sound comes first, and then the lights and then the wolves. They, they wait a little bit. So, um, yeah, that's the aura. I love the aura. I think it's one of the best things about this game. It's fantastic. Uh, funnily enough, actually, I was at work. I, uh, <laughs> I had to go to the my IT department, and it turned out that both of the people that work there also play the long dark. Uh, but one of them uh, has turned off the aurora sounds because he doesn't like that noise. The little... Uh, how about you? Do you like the aurora sounds or do you find it annoying? I personally think it's fantastic. I, I can't imagine having the aurora without it. But that's just me. Also, hi if you're watching IT people. So let's go and repair the uh, tower. There we are. I don't remember, did I leave anything in there? I don't think so, did I? I think I took everything with me. Yeah, I thought so. Okay, so there was a car battery here, and as you see, I checked all the cars in Milton, and one of them did have a battery. Funnily enough. Look at this, so many houses. Alright, let's repair this thing. Let's do fuses first. This is a great thing. I didn't think this was going to be... A good addition necessarily it's kind of okay like but it's always i feel that the long dog is such a good game already that it's it's always with apprehension uh that i receive new things to the game because i feel like well it, it takes so little for new things to ruin a game but with the long dog every time they had something new with maybe one or two exceptions it's always really really good and when they added this, the radio and the tower, I think it's a great addition. And the aurora stopped. I bet you it's because it's reset. Yeah, it reset. Because I repaired the tower. <laughs> That's funny, isn't it? There was already an aurora. But because I repaired the tower, it triggered an aurora. So it did the whole thing again. <laughs> That's funny, isn't it? But yeah, when they added this, I, I thought it was a great addition because for one thing you got this single void thing, so it's kind of like a little quest in survival mode, which a lot of people like because it gives them a purpose in survival mode, which is nice. But what I really like about it is that it gives you an uh, something extra to do if you're out in an aurora. So generally speaking, you probably shouldn't be out in an aurora in general anyway, because during an aurora, the predators are much more dangerous. Bears especially have like double hit points and they are really aggressive and aurora wolves don't scare hardly. So in general, you probably don't want to go out in an aurora because it's very dangerous. But if you are out in Aurora anyway, either by choice or by accident, or not by choice, 
now at least you have an extra you know reason to be out there or something that you can do which is finding these supply caches and the bunkers of course so i really like this addition it adds another layer there we go all right now we can find stuff in mountain town and in um Hushru valley all right so it's in Hashira Valley. It even tells you it's in Hashira Valley. So we're going to go there right now. Uh, we got to be a bit careful. What, what, what did I find? Was there a signal? Ah, oh, no, it was a cache. But it was that way. Okay, well. Oh, we're not going to go that way right now. Supply cache can, can wait. So uh, I have looted a couple things on the way to Hashira Valley. Uh, on, when I first went there, on actually on episode one of this season, of this series, I went through Milton, hardly looted anything. And I think I did stop in the trailers and the church. I think those places are looted. But there are probably going to be wolves in the way as well. So we got to be a bit careful here. I don't really want to run if I can help it. Because of um, food and stamina. I do have a peach pie that I will eat if I have to. And I might have to eat it actually. Let's see. We won't see any moose or deer or rabbits or ptarmigans. So during Aurora. Um, if you watch this far, I'm sure you know all this stuff, but I like to explain everything in case there are first time viewers. Although some people watch this series from a random episode, you know. Uh, during Aurora, all of the prey animals are removed. As I said earlier, like the effects of the Aurora are not felt right away. So when the lights come out and you hear the noise, it doesn't happen right away that these the animals change. But at some point they just pop the spawn and only the predators remain so the wolves uh, remain and bears remain and i'm guessing the cougar when the cougar gets added later this year that probably remains as well aurora cougar that's going to be a sight to behold uh but the deer and this is probably all looted i guess yeah uh the deer and uh Moose and rabbit timing, they all despawn. They don't come back. There's a great clip of streamer once and only where he is hunting a moose as an aurora begins. And as he shoots his arrow at the moose and the arrow is mid-flight, the moose despawns in front of him. <laughs> and predators, which is wolves and bears, they are replaced by their aurora counterparts. However, they need to have a non-Aurora counterpart, you know, available. I don't, I don't think actually Firehard and Arrows work against these. Let's just have a quick look in here. I think I've already, I've already been here, but I'm not sure what lights there are in here. If anything, are there any lights at all? No. Any computers, anything? Uh, so if you kill all the wolves in an area, then um, uh, then there are no aurorals that are going to spawn. That's basically what's going to happen. I might have to light a torch because I also need to go through the cave into Ashura Valley. So I might need to light a torch, actually. And that means also that the wolves can be somewhat different. So if you... If you have a wolf roaming around, then an aurora hits. The, the wolf can re, uh, can despawn, and then the aurora counterpart spawns somewhere else. But it's meant to be the same wolf. Uh, I think it's just the way the developers did it because it, it's hard to, I presume, program in that an animal transforms into an aurora version. It's kind of tricky to do. So instead, the easiest way is to, they just like the wolf just despawns, and then the aurora wolf spawns in instead. And that's basically what it is. And the raw versions are much tougher. They basically have more hit points. And they also uh, have damage reduction. And they also, I think, detect you from further away. 
So they are overall as a greater threat. Now, a wolf should die from a headshot with a bow, regardless of archery skill. Um, and even if there are raw wolves. It has happened to me once that I shot at an raw wolf in the head and it survived. Um, but that may have been a bug or it may have been that I actually hit the back and then the arrow when the wolf died got moved into the head. I don't know. So that may have been just a one-off. They should die from one hit. So Aurora Wolves, if you're confident with the bow and you're out in Aurora, Aurora Wolves shouldn't be much of an issue. They will be the same as regular wolves just running about. Uh, Aurora Bears though is another story. Uh, they still act like regular bears, except that they're not afraid of uh, you know, fire and all that, for the most part. But they are much tougher and they are hard to kill. They take a lot of, uh, of arrows. Do I have I left anything in here? A lights? Uh, yeah, okay, I have left this. Uh, the spray paint. Is there anything else I've left in here? I don't think so. No. I mean, I'll check again later, but... Okay, I'm not going to stay here and warm up, because we're going to go through the cave anyway. Okay. Let's have a quick look at the latrines. In case there's something here. Can I map this, by the way? No. I think you can map in Aurora. Yeah. This is like clear night, see? Yeah. Now let me just see, because I can't really remember. It's, uh, last time I was here was, uh, and in this run, was in episode one, which was February, we're called in February or January 2023, so that's over a year ago. Been a while. It took took a while to get 100 plus days. I don't see any markings. It must be in basin. Uh, 2023 was an interesting uh, year. So I was initially thinking I might get to 500 days within a year, within 2023. But you know, but since I became a father, not long after the series started, and then we had uh, DLC content and all this stuff, and it was harder to find time and there were other projects. So just wasn't possible so and an episode tends to be usually two to four days it varies though there will be at least one episode that's going to span probably 20 days later probably after we've done all the regions like around day 300 or something which will be the research the hibernation research uh, episode talk about that later but yeah that's okay we're not in a hurry are we So, I'm going to eat the cattails just because um, I'm also going to eat this. Now, if you turn on the radio now, so you got a signal. And some people, when they get this signal, they, they go out and around and they try and look around the cave. And it's like, where is this bunker? But of course, it's in the cave. That's where you want to go. I think I'm going to use a match here because I kind of need uh, light. Otherwise, I, I can't get through here. I do need to cook food as well. There might be food in the bunker. There are two bunkers in Hushira Valley. Well, one of them is the normal prepper cache bunker thing. And I already have the recipe, uh, I think, right? I f Did I find the recipe? Uh, no. Okay. I haven't found the recipe. <laughs> okay. I'll check that another time, though. So, um, there is one also above us when we come out now in the Lonely Cave. But we're not going to go there now. We are going to go to Hushira Valley and explore it. 
Leita. It's a fantastic region. It's very good on Interloper if you spawn. If you spawn on Interloper in Ashura Valley and you know the region, it's fantastic. You are guaranteed to find a Haxor, a Bedroll, a Machinor, a Combat Pants, Air Wrap, uh, Hammer, and some other stuff. It's just a really, really good starting region. Now, I've been here uh, because I went to Signal Fire in episode two to get the hammer. Um, up there is the other bunker, like right up there, right there. Um, but I haven't really done the majority of the region. And we will come back here. Probably we'll do this region after we've done the Far Territory. Because after we've got this bunker and we've been in Milton for a while, we're going to go back to Forsaken Airfield and finish Signal Void. Probably hang on to Forsaken Airfield a little bit. Then we'll do Zone of Contamination, seeing as we're there anyway. And then we'll go back and then we'll probably come here and we'll spend some time here. A very good thing to do in a survival run, if you're not familiar with Hushra Valley, is to set yourself a goal. Go to Hushra Valley and survive here for 50 days. Just try and survive in this region for 50 days. Doesn't matter if it's an interloper or pilgrim, just survive for 50 days in this region without leaving. And if you do, you will then have mastered the region afterwards. You will have understood the layout of this region and you'll know what to do about it. Uh, how to survive it and everything. So that's something I highly recommend that you do. And once you have figured out the region, doesn't matter what difficulty, once you've figured it out, uh, you'll you'll like it more and you will thrive when you spawn it next time. So this is why I don't pick up all the cattails all, all the time, you know, because now I need them. Now I don't have the radio out because I actually know where the bunker is, or at least I know roughly where it is. It's it's near these uh, this this lake that's up here, and I can see there is a maple there. I don't think this maple was here before. It's probably been added after they added the sled. Might as well grab it in that case. And we will come back and we'll master this region. It's a really really good region. Uh, so, we are going to go down here. I think I remember where it is, but I might be off by a little bit. We'll just bring out the uh, radio in that case. This was in episode 2. I went here and I got all the essentials and that was good. In episode 2 I did the only thing that I kind of regret in the whole series. <laughs> which is that I got lost in the, in the blizzard. Uh, and then I took uh, and I got so confused why I got lost because I was sure I knew my way in a blizzard in Hushra Valley but I got lost and then I spent a little bit too much time talking about how I got lost and why I thought I knew I was going and uh, that could have been shorter <laughs> but other than that uh, all right with it. so it's around here somewhere um, It's over there, I think. Yeah, over there. Or, or, no, up, up there. Yeah, up there, I think it is. I might need to make a quick fire. Just to... Uh, get some more torches. I might do that quickly. We don't need to cook anything, I don't think. We could cook some porridge quickly. Can you eat trees? Because I'm gonna. Let's just make a very quick fire here. Huh? In the open. Uh just to get some more torches. We could we could make a porridge or something quickly just to have some food. Although I think I left all that behind. I don't think I'm carrying anything that can be cooked. Uh, am I? I don't think so. The coal on here. We got so many of them, so it doesn't matter. Uh, no, we can go to the potato, but that takes forever. We're not doing that. No. And we're just going to grab torches. We're going to grab a few because we're going to be walking for a little bit. Uh, good torches only. Okay, uh, look away if you don't like brightness because we're going to get very bright now because the torches stack. I'm going to have about five torches, I imagine. Uh, yeah, right. 
Let's do one more for good measure, maybe. We'll use that one. I guess good. Okay, let's eat some cattails. You can look back, by the way. That's the thing with the torches, they stack. And uh, that includes the warmth, by the way. A torch will give you, I think it's four degrees warmth bonus when you have a torch. And that stacks. So if you put two torches, we can maybe even test it. So here it's, uh, I'm too close to a fire, I think. Uh, seven. Minus five, uh, nah, maybe we can very quickly test it. So, so I stand here, minus six. And then we take this, put that here. Now it's minus three, so it's three degrees. See, they stack. Isn't that something? And uh, that doesn't really do much for you, <laughs> but it's a neat little thing. And I have used it to my advantage once. It was, uh, I have a series called Mastering All Skills on Stalker. It's a four part series made before the DLC where I get all the skills to level five. And it was one case where a moose died on a hill where I couldn't put a fire and it was really cold. What I did is I uh, put a fire somewhere else and I threw a bunch of torches at the carcass and then I stood on the torches and it was fine. Okay, I assume it's here. Yeah, oh, I can actually uncover it without the radio. There we are. There we go. We have found the hatch. All right. Let's go inside and see what awaits in this bunker. So in the first bunker, they had kind of like this memory thing going on. In the second bunker, it was kind of like a dream thing. What is there in this one? Let's find out. <laughs> All right, is this bunker Omega or Gamma? All right. Where you fall out, you? Uh huh. All right. This is different. Let's look around. We got fuses. Let's look around closely. Because last time I spent ages looking for a book that was like right in my face. Scrap metal, let's, let's look around. This, by the way, is a game changer. This changes Hushra Valley, if you have the DLC. Because the one thing about Hushra Valley is it has no man-made structures at all. So only caves and things. But, of course, there is the bunker up in the cave, but that's just a bunker with a bed in it, and that's it kind of thing. And it's kind of hard to get to. But if you have the DLC and you have gotten the radio, because you have to get the radio first. But once you have the radio, if you then unlock this bunker, now Hashtra Valley becomes much easier because there is now one man-made structure, basically, in the region. And that structure has a workbench. So you can actually craft things here now in Hashtra Valley. So that is, that is a big deal. Really big deal. All right. Wires, crates, uh, we'll open the crates later. Hurry, lantern fuel, hurrah. Then we got more drawings of the flux capacitor. <laughs> Let's see, uh, why is the blood in here? That's uh, not a good sign. Not a good sign for any scientist when there's blood in the research center. It's happened to me once, long story, but they were, <laughs> I was in the lab and uh, yeah, well, anyway. <laughs> it sounded ominous, but let's not get into it. It wasn't anything bad. Okay, uh... Uh... I don't see anything else here. Oh, let's put on the radio. Get some music in here. Alright, so what's down here then? Okay, this is the logbook. But before I pick that up... Let's leave that water. Hey, we got corn, and we got soup, and we got, I'm going to wait to pick that up because it might trigger a scene. 
And I want to have a bigger torch for that. But let's look around a bit first. It was just a, a cut, by the way. <gasps> oh my god! Yes! Yes! Oh, wow. <sighs> Words cannot express how happy I am to find them. <laughs> Wool socks. Holy moly. Wow. It has been a journey and a half. Hallelujah. Now we got it. There isn't anything else to find unless we're super lucky and find the red ones of these, which can spawn in lower, but it's so rare. It's practically as a bug. Holy crap. Wow. That was good. Uh, yeah, the blood in the lab was just like a little cut, by the way. <laughs> it was more than that. Um... But I bled, but I bled over the uh, my notes. <laughs> That's the problem. Um, anyway, okay. Uh, let's pick up this. The island hasn't been making our lives any easier. Hauling loads from the coast to the inland bases has been slow and costly, and people are starting to notice our operation around the airfield and mine. Mm -hmm. It's getting harder to stay under the radar. But the character of the locals, both here and far inland, seems in our favor. There aren't any helping hands. Outsiders get ignored and then forgotten. And we play the part. Okay. That didn't really add anything, so let's, uh... Very, uh, Fallout 4, though, isn't it? Do you work for the Institute? Institute? What's the Institute? You know, this whole shadow operation. Alright, now to find the other thing. <laughs> which I'm sure is right in front of my face somewhere, right? Did they flush it down the toilet? Uh, now I'm going to spend a year looking for it again. I bet it's like here somewhere and I just missed it. Yeah, there it is. Uh, let's light another torch again. I just don't want to take a chance. All right, let's see. What we got? Session 14, Project Medical Officer interviewing patient seven. Evan. Return to the first instance. What did you see? It was at the beach. Just pictures in my head, feelings. Mm -hmm. One of those beaches where the, the sand goes way down to the water, no drop off. I remember a, a gray day and dark water, no wind, no waves. I was alone, looking around a lot. I didn't understand what was happening. What, what do you think when you're that little? Always wondered mm. why it was that day, that trip that stuck with me. Focus on the ending, the final frame. They lost me. Just a little kid. I'm gonna need to eat soon. Mm. Okay. So we did it. Now we need to uh, find the last bunker, which is in Forsaken Airfield. But well, we will do that later. Alright, I have some things to say about that too. But, uh, wait. Uh, how long? I think I looted everything in here. Uh, I wonder what happened. It's all abandoned. There's blood in the cabinets, broken plates. People haven't been in in a while, I guess. There's blood in the bathroom too. Did you guys also get a cut? And your notes gold medal though? <laughs> I had a year uh, where I spent a whole year in a lab when I was doing my PhD. Uh, kind of almost consecutively obviously breaks here and there but that was an interesting year uh, doing behavioral research mm, I don't 
think there's anything else. I think we're gonna head back if that's the case, and then I'll tell you what I think about that. Uh, yeah, I guess we're done here then. Let's go. All right, that was good. I'm gonna see if we can keep this fire, maybe even cook. That'll be good. Is this fire still going? No. <laughs> All right. Well, that's that's okay. Let's go. All right. Let's get out of here. All right. So that one was a bit different. So I think they were talking about a childhood memory. So it was a bit odd that they say refer to the first instance, which would suggest that this is some sort of event. Maybe like the first time you dream about it, or the first time something happened, or something like that. But we don't have any context, so we don't know why they're interested in this. Why Why do they care about some patient uh, having a memory about getting basically lost on the beach? Right? We don't know that. At least not yet. So... Uh, it's hard to really say what this signifies because it's not really clear if we're talking about something that's been triggered by this research of the machine or if it's uh, something else. But I will say a few things about it. There's a few interesting notes about this particular transcript that probably isn't connected to Signal Void at all, but just for context. So what he's talking about there is a childhood memory. Uh, when he was very little, because he said he was very little. Now, there's a couple of things about that. Uh, first off, there's something called uh, inf infantile amnesia. Now, if you think back, you, the viewer, if you think back of when you were little, what is the earliest memory that you have? Huh? What is the first thing you remember? Now, if you think about it, you probably don't have that many memories that you remember before you started school. There might be the odd thing, you might remember some holiday or something special that happened, you know, little little things here and there, but basically the way memory works is that when you're very little, you don't remember any of that stuff. You don't remember when you were a baby. If anyone says, oh yeah, I remember that happening when I was two, no, you don't remember that. People might have told you what happened when you were two, and then through a phenomenon called social contagion, you uh, build up a memory of what you think happened, but you don't actually remember it. You just think you remember it. Uh, but at a certain age, your brain has developed to the degree where you actually can remember. And I'm talking about explicit memories here, not implicit ones. Like for example, when you're a baby, you learn how to say walk, right? And you remember how to do that, but that's a motor memory. And you learn language words and that sort of thing. So that's different. I'm talking about explicit event memories, right? And that happens at a certain age. So that's why you you don't remember that much before you're like six or something, except for the odd thing. Uh, so childhood memories are very rare. Uh, and in this particular case, in the single void transcript, he doesn't really say how old he was. He just said that he was so little. And he said that he was out on the beach and there was no one there, and that they lost him. So the implication there, if I understood it correctly, is that he basically was at a beach and that the parents lost him. He got lost on the beach, which is kind of odd considering it's a wide open beach Should be, and there's no one around. Should be easy enough to spot a kid, right? So that might mean that this is not a real memory. It might be a, a dream or it might be something to do with this machine. We don't really know. But if you treat it like a real memory, there's a few interesting things in. There is such a thing as a false memory, which I don't think is implied in Single Void, but just out of curiosity. Um, there's a very famous study called the Shopping Mall Study, which is where you convince people that they got lost in a shopping mall when they were little, even though that didn't actually happen. The way that this is done and this is done by Elizabeth Loftus, is that you interview the participant's family first and you get some information from them about the real things that happened when they were a child. Oh, you remember when you went hiking there or went to Disneyland or whatever? And then they add, they ask them about these memories in an interview. 
and then they add a fourth memory, which is fake, which is getting lost in the mall. And obviously you check that they actually never did get lost in the mall first. And they'll say, hey, uh, so uh, my mom, your mother told us that you got lost in the shopping mall when you were five. Do you remember that? And then people are like, uh... Yo, yeah, yeah, I remember now. Yeah, I remember what well, must have been in this shopping mall. And then, yeah, this old lady helped me out. And none of this happened, right? It's, it's all made up. But because people tell you that this actually did happen, you start forming a memory of the event. And then that becomes your truth. And eventually you become so um, convinced by it that it feels like a real memory. Uh... You can even, and if you show a Photoshop picture as well, if you make a fake photograph saying, hey, here's the memory, you remember this? Then people get really convinced and then they think it's a real memory. Uh, so you can actually implant fake memories into people. Now, granted, there's a lot of buts to this study. Like, not, it didn't work for all people. It was like, I think it was 25% of study uh, participants or something who were convinced it was real. And uh, I think uh, uh, they also reported less details of the memory when it wasn't a real memory and that sort of thing. So there's a lot of, you know, uh, details about this study. But the gist of it is that uh, we can remember things that didn't happen. And there's something called social contagion. That's when people influence your memory. A good example might be something like, hey, remember when we went to Disneyland? That was a fun trip. Yeah, we had to drive in the car and it was a Sunday morning and uh, there were no traffic. So it was very relaxing. And then the other person, like say your brother who, I was, who was also in the car, was like, it wasn't on a Sunday, it was on a Friday because we we're going to spend a weekend there. Oh, was it? Oh. And then you get confused and say, oh, maybe it was Friday then. And then you change your memory to now it was on Friday and it was in, there was traffic. But the truth was it actually was on Sunday in the morning. The one of you got it wrong and then you convince each other and then your memory changes. And this happens because uh, when we remember things, we take little pieces of information and put it together like a puzzle. You don't have one memory of one event. You have loads of different pieces of that memory. And every time you have to remember it, you put those pieces together. And what happens is you'll forget certain details. Mm, go away. Go away. Holy crap. Uh, let's go. <laughs> I am risking it. Story to be continued. <sighs> I am not risking that. I'm not risking that. <laughs> not risking the run for that. <laughs> to be continued. I'm gonna sleep in here, okay? <laughs> that wolf did so much damage. Holy crap. Okay. Uh... Oh, it's full gear and everything. Don't go out in the Aurora. Where did that wolf come from? I don't even smell or anything. <sighs> Isn't there a bed here? There is, yeah. <sighs> Holy moly. We're gonna eat our tomato soup. Give me a moment. Give me a moment there. My nerves are on fire. I almost died. I was like, oh, okay, it's a wolf. Uh, no biggie. And I was that close to dying there. And when that second wolf came running, I was like, I'm not risking this. I could probably take that wolf with with a bow shot to the head. But if I miss, this run is over. And he was coming fast, so fast. And I was like, I am, I am not risking it. No way. We're going to sleep 10 hours because I need to heal. Can I sleep 10 hours? No. 
We're gonna use our cattails. This is what the cattails are for. We're gonna use them. We'll get more cattails later in the basin or something. As long as I have six. I can have six as a backup. That's good enough. Holy moly. I did not expect that to happen. <laughs> Don't go out during the roar, kids. <laughs> Holy. <sighs> As for talking about memory instead of listening to the wolves. Well, there was a lot of ambient noise. So I couldn't hear him. He, he came out of nowhere. As long as he didn't ruin my socks. <laughs> okay, let's go to the farm and uh, and have a little zit rep and collect our brain. Okay, there's a dead wolf somewhere also. <sighs> Holy, that was way too close. I wasn't worried about it though because I was like, eh. You know, I got really good gear. Um, we got nearly full health. Like, it was high enough. And I used the hatchet and everything. And I was like, yeah, I'd be fine. <sighs> but no. No. That was, that was so close to ending the run. That's happened to me once before. Where I died and I was in, in shock that I died. You know, some it doesn't matter what you, gear you got, a wolf can kill you. I was doing a challenge where you had to hunt a bunch of wolves and things. This was a couple of years ago. And I had great gear. And I think I had 80% health. And a wolf came at me. And uh, I was like, I'd be right, you know. And he decimated me. So I think he took got some bites in. So during a struggle, you know, your health goes gradually down. But then um, it also... Um, I think I think as long as it jumps down, and I think that's the wolf taking bites out of you or something like that. And I just got destroyed by a wolf. And this was the closest I've seen to that. Where this this wolf, he was, he had some bites in him. Like that was really really. Wow, I'm gonna grab some of these rabbits for uh, future use. Stressful. That story took a turn. Oops. Alright, let me... I'll, I'll continue this. The story was almost done anyway, but... Uh, I'm not gonna hunt any of these deer. I'm just uh, grabbing these rabbits. Doesn't matter if I smell, because I, I should be able to take on a wolf now. <sighs> so, as far as I know... Aurora wolves don't do more damage, I don't think. But they are more persistent. I mean, you saw there, that second wolf, if you go back, if you want, that second wolf, the one I decided to flee from, he was really far away. And I don't smell, I don't have anything on me. I left my pies behind, remember? I didn't want to take any chances, so I have no sting. And he saw me from miles away. And he was coming. No. To be fair though, um, I was bleeding, so that made it easier for him to detect me. Uh, so I, I was weak, so he was going for me because I was weak. But that first wolf, I, I, I'm not sure what happened there. That wolf must have been coming from around the corner or something. That was, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what happened there exactly. Um... Let me just have a quick look here while we're warm anyway. <sighs> that was way too close. I mean, yeah. Oh, let it be a lesson that these things are not pre-recorded as <laughs> such, you know, and then dubbed over. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, uh, let's just map over here. I just want to have a quick look up here. Sometimes there's like a backpack around here. I don't think there is one now. I think I checked already, but... Still. <sighs> oh, God. Okay, well, the story was practically done. It was not a story anymore. It was more like, <laughs> like a lecture, but... Um... <sighs> Basically, when you remember something, you have to put all those pieces together. So... For example, if I have to remember that wolf attack that just happened, I have to remember where it happened, 
how much health I had, what was I talking about, where did the wolf come from, you know, when did, when did this happen, and so on and so forth. And then, when you have to remember it, you put all of those pieces together, and that forms your memory. But if you forget one of those details, uh, then um, then you will fill it in with whatever makes sense to you. Oh, it must have been that, or must have been this. And that becomes your new truth. And what can happen through what's called social contagion is someone else will tell you, oh, no, that actually didn't happen in Milton. That happened in, in uh, Fallen Musk Egg. And I'm like, oh, was it? Oh, I can't really remember. Yeah, I guess it was Fallen Musk Egg, I suppose. And that then that becomes my new truth. It becomes my new memory. So your memory becomes confounded because someone else told you what you remember effectively. Um, and that's social contagion. That's why eyewitnesses in court are very unreliable, particularly when it's a, a, a court case that's in the media, because people will read about the case in the news and then they'll misremember stuff because they're confusing it with the newspaper. You know, they won't admit it. It's not on purpose. It's just how memory works. And here, this uh, in this uh, uh, scene void thing, they're talking about a childhood memory on the beach and they keep repeating it like the first instance um, and so it's possible that this is a memory that didn't actually happen because of how young the person was and some of the details don't make sense that he's alone on a beach a flat beach it's kind of odd uh, so uh, this is potentially a, uh, a false memory I definitely need to cook this stuff. I might do that next episode, though. Um... Get these rabbits. Alright. Wow, that was so stressful. Let's grab our pies. Uh, let's have a look in here quickly. I want to just organize this quick. Let me make a note also, we need to, uh, so we did this, and now I want to cook, meat, harvest rabbits, and then let's explore Milton, really. Right, uh, uh, we don't need this now, we can really see here, can't we? Alright, sorry, I'm still recovering from what just happened. Alright, let's just sort this out a bit because I put stuff... Uh, I'm just going to put all this here. And I don't I don't need to carry this around. It's nice to also have supplies here and there. Uh, we will be using it though for sure, but... I'm going to put this in. Let's, do we have more oats? Yeah, we do. Let's put these oats here so they're together. Salt. Bunch of salt. Some soda. More salt. Maple syrup. We'll use that for pancakes, probably. I think I'm going to eat this uh, beef jerky. All these sardines. Carrot. Alright. Let's eat uh, this uh, beef jerky. And let's eat one of these sardines as well. And I think we're probably good from there. Let's also sort some inventory out because I picked up some stuff. I don't know. Alright. Uh, let's move all this in there. Let's harvest this arrow here. We got an extra skillet, so you have <laughs> way too many skillets. Um, might cook the stuff in here. Um, yeah. What else? So we got <clears throat> two of these accelerants that we don't need. Put the arrows in there, put the scrap metal in there, and the feathers. Mm, we can put the recycled cans in there. 
and a bunch of misc stuff. Uh, I guess that's it. Is there anything else to put in there? We got the rabbits to house. Oh, the corn, right? Uh, okay. I'm like a cabin fever of being in here, but I think I want to cook everything in here because we got a six hub stove. We're gonna do that later though. Just drop some of these uh, here. A lot of wood. Matches also. We don't need this many matches. Although I could just carry them back. That's fine. We'll probably go by Mystery Lake before anything. Uh, okay. Um, right. Is that everything? I think maybe it is. Yeah, let's harvest this torch. And I want to do some cooking. I might do it in the night. But not right now. Potato, yeah, right. We have some potatoes. Let's drop those. Also the corn. I wonder how far we are from scurvy. I don't think I've been eating a lot of vitamins. A couple of odd things here and there. Also some cattails just now. So I don't know. Need four more cattails. Anything else? Is that it? I think that is it for now. What's my clothing looking like? What took damage there? I think the hat took some damage. Yeah, that's alright actually. And yeah, the highlight of that. We got the second wool socks. Yes. Gosh, only 140 days find two of these things and I find it in a bunker of all places in a random container but I am super happy that I actually got it because I can't believe how long it's taken to find two of these things and usually there's there's not loads of them but there's usually at least like four or five of them around that is it that's weird on the, on the other hand I think I found four of these <laughs> something like that that's a bit weird isn't it and we have these as well. So we actually have everything now. The only exception is uh, we haven't found the flight cap, which I think, is that better than this? I can't remember. But we, we will get the technical balaclava, which I think is better than this, but we'll see. But yeah, Whew. I'm so stoked that we got the wool socks. And the bunker was interesting, but it's kind of the same as the first bunker. It's just someone remembering something. So you got the same issues, except this is when they were young. So there's some childhood issues there and there's some contagion issues. But we don't have any context, so I don't know what was going on in those interviews. So we have to see. And I haven't really looked at the story so far than through this run, so I don't know. So that's interesting. But we got that, and now we got wool socks too. So now the next step is we're going to do some cooking. We're gonna stay in Milton a little bit to establish this as a regional base, so it's solid. So we're gonna make sure we have lots of food, lots of water, and we're gonna do rest of Milton too. And Milton's actually not that big, uh, but what we need to go and do primarily is we need to go and uh, we should kill the bear, to be honest, and grab the meat and bring it back here with the sled, as well as the hide. And we need to get to the plane crash. The plane crash has a stim and it has a firmus, the jackrabbit's firmus, which is, of course, the one you want to use because it's the coolest one. And uh, that's about it. And then there's some bits and bobs here and there's some caves and things like that. And then the basin. Um, the basin has the moose, but the problem with killing the moose if it's in the basin is that you can't really take it back here. Uh, unless you climb up the rope a few times, and I, I don't really want to do that. So we might we might go via the basin on the way home. Uh, what I might do is I'll put a bunch of stuff in the sled and then go down into the basin and then drag the sled back home. I might do that. Uh, so I can bring some books and things. But I don't think we'll kill the moose in the basin. We'll come back to the basin another time. Uh, the because the basin is so far down, it's almost like it's separate region. So this area here is the basin. So we have now done quite a lot of Milton. But what we need to do is there's some caves and stuff here. This this area, we haven't really done anything here where the plane crash is. And this part with the bridge and the bear. So we need to do that part. And uh, we need to cook and get some more food sorted out for this, this base here as well. And then we've more or less done it. But this basin here is kind of like its own region. 
because you got wolves, rabbits, deer, and moose, and you got a cave. You don't have a workbench, but you have a cave you can stay in. And uh, you got cattails and things. And because it's it's so far from it, you have to really climb up long ropes to bring anything back. It's not often worth going there and then grabbing stuff and bringing it back because it's going to exhaust you. You could do it, of course, but it's a little bit of a hassle. Um, and if you could go the other way via Fallen Muskeg, then you end up somewhere far away from base there too. So it's kind of like its own little limbo zone almost. So we're not really going to go around and explore that very much. We're more or less just going to go through it into Fallen Muskeg and then back to uh, Mystery Lake, I think, and do a last like sit rep before we head into the Forsaken Airfield and stuff again. Uh, but we'll come back to the basin in a future episode. We're going to have our own little episode for just this region or this sub region. So we'll do that another time. But yeah, so that's this episode. Let's just save the game and then we'll do some cooking next time and explore some more. We'll get to Stim probably next time, I imagine, unless we are bear hunting, maybe both. But yeah, there you have it. So that was uh, that was that last bunker. That was Milton. And boy, was that a close encounter. So after the whole shenanigans in Broken Railroad, when I almost died because there were like a billion wolves and I killed, I think, eight wolves and I went in a wolf struggle that almost killed me. It was one of those moments where like, oh, it's so tempting to click Alt F4, but don't do it. Don't, you know. Um, after that, I thought, I gotta be more careful because I use my health as a resource a lot. My health is my resource, so when I travel, especially long distances, I don't really care if my health goes down. I got this under control, I'll heal later. Wolves, not that much of an issue. But here, uh, I underestimated the raw wolf. They were detecting me from much further away than I thought, and they crept up on me, and they really got the jump on me there. And in addition, I was talking, so I couldn't hear it. Although normally I do hear it. Uh, in many episodes, you might have noticed I'm talking and suddenly I stop because I can hear the wolf. Here I didn't hear it. It might also be been because of the... But in any case, that was, that was that. I'm glad we survived. Let's try and avoid that situation again. <laughs> and let's try not to die. Whew. Okay. I need a, I need a break. Thank you uh, for watching, and I'll see you next time, survivors. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>